Distinguished guest, good morning. I'm very honored to have this opportunity to attend this event to share with you about sustainability. I will share with you some ideas and practices. I'm very glad to see a lot of old friends here, because normally I work in Beijing. I'm very glad to come to Shanghai and see a lot of old friends. Today, I will introduce several aspects. So, first, I will briefly overview Standard Chartered Bank's、uh, sustainability framework and. Concept, and then I will give you two case studies to showcase how we are utilizing these framework into our daily practices. So before that, I want to give you an overview of Standard Chartered Bank, because not everyone knows about Standard Chartered Bank. Standard Chartered Bank is an internationally leading bank. Crossing 79 countries and regions, so we have about 1,700 offices and 89,000 employees, and it's the major market is in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Not like the other banks, who are mainly based in Europe and U.S. So this is very different from the other banks, and especially for China, Standard Chartered is the a bank with the longest industry. So since 1808, we started our business in China and have never stopped our business here. So we have covered 28 cities. We have already. Sixteen, twenty-six branches, seventy-eight sub sub diaries. So, our customer not only include、uh, emerging influentials, but also SME among the enterprises. We have covered a lot of Chinese enterprises that are going global. Including SOE and private enterprises, and also a lot of foreign-funded enterprises which are trying to enter Chinese market. So I want to introduce about the sustainability framework of Standard Chartered Bank. Every time when I talk about the sustainability development of Standard Chartered Bank, then normally I take this picture to showcase our idea. You can see in the middle it was here for good, which is our brand. Actually, you know, for good. Actually, there's some tricky things in that. So we want to be force for good. That means we are doing things for good. Another meaning is that. We hope that we can be here forever, for long term. I, I think here for good. I think some of the meaning cannot be reflected in Chinese trans, translation. So we put this here for good in the middle of our framework. This is very important because it covers. All instructions for our daily work. How do we do our business? How do we treat our customers? How do we handle all stakeholders' relationship? Here for good is our major instructions. Because of here for good, how do we? Realize the commitment of the brand. So we will break down into three parts. The first part is be a responsible enterprise. When I going upstairs with Mr. Yang from Li Bai, so in order to show your social responsibility of the enterprise, there are different aspects. For me, the most important approach in Standard Chartered Bank. 
So we call it to be a responsible enterprise. What does it mean? One of the major thing is that we need to provide quality products and services to our customers. That is the essential part for an enterprise. Second, to be honest and fair to our customers. Third, abide by the rules and regulations, especially for the banks. So we call it be a responsible enterprise. Second part is promoting sustainable development because one of the major business of the banks or one fundamental business is loans. When we lending the money to the enterprises, you can utilize a way to promote the local economy. For example, if an enterprise needs to get loans from us, but when we found that the enterprises are doing some business which are harmful to the local economy or environment, in that situation, for our loans decision, we will be very cautious. Sometimes we would even ask the customer to 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 assess the potential impact on the local environment. If you do have some negative impact, how would you take some countermeasures to avoid those Im negative impact? So you need to minimize the impact on the environment. So during while you are offering loans, you need to be able to take a very strict control. Another part is about SME. Actually, SME is an engine for the economic development in China. It provides the biggest job opportunities. It provides the biggest parts of the taxation. So it can really be called as the engine of the Chinese economy. But SME is cha facing a challenge in getting loans. In that situation, by giving the SME, which plays such an important role in Chinese economy, if you can provide some financial support, that it is also a contribution for the sustainability of the local economy. From the perspective of the banks, that the last part has direct correlation with today's topic. Investing community that in, includes uh, the hope campaigns and a lot of volunteer activities by contributing to the community. We hope that for the community we are in, we can play a positive and long term role and realizing our social responsibility. So I think we have very good ways to put our efforts in all these three aspects so that for the, all the major stakeholders, we will be able to have very good interaction and have good virtuous circle. And for our sustainability strategy, we can summarize in three. First is sustainability is not just a vague concept. It can be integrated into our daily practices and business activities. So every time when we are in office, it doesn't mean that we need to have an additional project to achieve sustainability. Otherwise, it will not be called sustainability. Every time when you are in office, everything you do, every interaction with your customer, every communication exchanges with the external stakeholders, all those activities should be sustainability related. If I need to put it in a more accurate way, it should be embedded into your daily businesses, day in and day out. That is sustaining operation. That is the approach of sustainability. Second point is because a lot of you are front enterprises. You know that if you want to take 
It's as an essential part for your daily practice. You need to have policies and procedures, and you also need to have related org, chart, org structure. Only in that way you will be able to embed it into your daily practice with high efficiency. Last point. Because China is facing a special political and economic environment, in order to uh, exert social impact, no, not a single organization will be able to achieve measurable impact. So, if you really want to have some measurable impact, so you need to work together with other. Organizations, including NGO, including the government, and also within the banking industry, and also you need to collaborate with the supervision authorities. After the theoretical introduction, please allow me to introduce to you some case studies. How we put our sustainability program into practice into reality. First of all, please allow me to introduce the very first program. We call it "See In Is Believing." The photo shown on the slide seemed quite vintage. The photo is a bit dark, and the quality is not that good. But、uh, it had a story behind. This picture was taken in 2003. That was in Dhaka. That was in a local eye hospital. There is a lot of colleagues from Standard Chartered. They are participating in the opening ceremony for this particular hospital. This is the origin for Seeing Believing. 2003 is 150 years old for Standard Chartered. In the opening ceremony, they were discussing what should they do to celebrate such important anniversary. So, in the local ophthalmology hospital, in local eye disease. It's a very important issue for the local community. The colleagues were saying that through donation to the hospital, we will be able to have the treatment to the local children that、uh, who couldn't afford those costs before. So in our standard charter network, it gets spread towards the whole world. Not only in Asia, Europe, or United States. Later on, this donation becomes a group effort. We have colleagues from all around the world making their donation for the ophthalmology project in the local hospital. This is the reason we come up with the name "Seeing Is Believing." For this particular project, the theme is like this. We call it preventable blindness. This is the social phenomenon. During the implementation, we are working with the NGOs around the world. We are also working closely with the NGA in the local region, as well as the public and private hospitals. We are basically working in three projects in order to push this project forward. Of course, we want the influence to be positive. First of all, we conducted a lot of training. These trainings are specifically designed for the facility in the local region, particularly in the poor region. We want the local doctors to be able to know how to conduct the basic operation necessary through the purchasing of certain devices. We will be able to improve the local quality. Thirdly. We will also promote the education 
of this particular disease, so the whole community will understand it better. In case of any symptoms, they will be able to come to the hospital as soon as they can. The financiers are from Standard Chartered colleagues and their network suppliers. But Standard Chartered will be responsible for how to assign this donation. From 2003 until now, this campaign has been running for 11 years. In each stage, we set up specific target. About how many people we want to cover with this program. We are very proud that by 2014, all of the specific target in each stage has been satisfied. We have a new target now. Prior to 2020, we would like to raise 100 million U.S. dollar and further donate this fund to the developing world. We would like to provide support to the general public. Who could not afford this treatment before? We will provide accessible treatment to this population. China will be my, the main beneficiary for this program. When Anna was. Talking to me, she wants me to answer two questions. How can we choose the right partner? On this slide, I listed clearly how seeing is believing is choosing our partners. How we define our management committees. The framework is relatively simple. There are two different routines. We have standard chartered as well as our partners. On the right-hand side, at the very top, you have standard chartered. We have the advisory committee, management committee, then the SIB team. This is the standard chartered side. To the specific country, we will have a coordinator for this program. We call it ambassador. In the particular country for this program, we also have the business units from the company, including our department as well as other business units. For the rest of departments, they will organize the volunteering work of the employees. They will also be responsible for. Promoting the program to their customers. So the first routine is standard chartered. On the second routine, these are our suppliers and partners. International Agency for Prevention of Blindness is the main association we are working with. In their side, they have CEO, they have specific expert committee, and they will also assign a specific project manager, being responsible for. Different countries. In the local committee, it includes NGOs, public and private hospitals. I've listed some of our main suppliers, including Orbis. We also have a Fred Hollow Foundation. In addition, we have some ophthalmology hospital in China. These will be the. Executor for these programs, including China Western Hospital and、uh, the Ophthalmology Hospital in Hohhot. NGO plays very important roles during these campaigns. From expertise and know-how perspective, it is very professional. Preventable blindness seemed simple. But if you go talk to some experts, it can be very technical. For preventable blindness, it includes cataracts,、uh, glaucoma. In the recent times, it may also get covered about diabetes caused blindness. It may cover a lot of different age groups, including the children, the senior generation. So it is very professional and segmented. For IA. PB, they have 
initiate a lot of programs with United Nations. It is the most authorized authority in this particular field. They also set up the expert committees, so their advice is very crucial for us. In the respective field I've mentioned, which area would you be focused in? How can you provide a high-quality, accessible, and affordable services? Many models have to be designed for it. We need to have all of the experts doing their work. As for the real execution, the public hospitals and the private hospitals in the local region will share their own expertise and take responsibility for orbits or for the whole of the foundation. They have been founded in China for a long time, and they are quite familiar with the prevention blindness system in China. But for themselves, they are not hospitals. They need to rely on the hospitals in order to fully implement these strategies. So each of them are specified in their respective field. Only through cooperation can the program be running more smoothly. Last but not least, during the whole cooperation and framework, if you look at how Standard Chartered working with the institutions, the two routines are not standalone. There are intertwined cooperation as well. Later on, I will share with you how should we make sure this program meets our set-up target. Some quick examples. Uh, the two photos in the middle. This was in China Western Hospital in Sichuan. We spent the whole morning with Orbis in Chengdu, hearing how this program has been moving forward. During this meeting, we learned some lessons and applied it to the future. Standard Chartered is not only standing there. Our CEO, our senior management team, will need to communicate with the other partner directly. No matter when we have a new sub-bank, we will initiate a new program particularly SIB. On the left-hand side corner, that was the Standard Chartered Bank we opened in Hohalt. On the right-hand side corner, that was during an auction for Liverpool a Football Club. We want our partners to come and make some donation. All of the donation will be the foundation for the SIB program as well. Like what I have just said, sustainability is already embedded in your everyday work. For these three photos, they are how we apply sustainability. We have specific counter machines for the blinded person and disabled person. They will be able to gain the services without the staff's help. We have also hired four disabled persons with blindness to do customer services, but it has been proved they have great service. When their blindness with an eyesight is not so good, but their other sensation can be very accurate so they will be able to understand the needs of the customers sometimes even better. We also have our employees great support. In Standard Charter, we have such a policy every year. You can take three days off to provide community services. And in the three days, you can choose to do volunteering work that you choose. And the Standard Charter will also pay your salary for the three-day leave. For these programs, they are owned by employees. Why would we say so? All of the program planning, execution, organization, they are mainly driven by the employees. In China, our branch covers 28 cities with several hundred 
organizations. We cannot manage everything from the headquarters, but through the day-to-day -day plan, our employee can take up their responsibilities. So I have answered the very first question Anna wants me to answer. The success of the program relies on the partner, whether it is a local NGO or the private and public hospitals in the local region. We will also include employee in the very important cooperation. I will skip some of the other part. I will use a few minutes to share with you our second case studies. You may have heard about this NGO already. It's called Hong Dan Dan in China. Hong Dan Dan is based in Beijing. Their destiny is to provide cultural products for the eyesight blindness people. Actually, the founder was a Chinese celebrity, Zheng Xiaojie. At the first one now, we have two programs with this organization already. One is a movie theater, the other is a library. We want our volunteer to talk with this population. They will narrative, narrate the movie plot to the blinded person. So without being able to see it, they can still understand the movie. The second project is a library. We will record these books into audio, and we will provide this audio to the blinded person. These are all cultural-based projects. This project is mainly being promoted in the southern part, and we started to see the results already. We have got many employees and their family members all getting involved. This project means you need to choose many professional and responsible persons in the local region, and they have to be with a strong capability. I think we will do more in promoting these programs in the future. Last, I will do a quick summary. The second question and I want me to answer is how to make sense in your community investment. On the left-hand side column, you can find the development strategy for standard chartered in China, including provide the leading product and services to customers, expanding our network, enhancing efficiency. We also need to deepen our connection with the local regulatory body. We will need to appeal and develop the local talents. We also need to manage the risk as well as control the risk. Last but not least, we need to bring in more positive influence to the local community. For standard charter community investment, on the right-hand side, these are some examples of how we provide support to the community. We have the specific ATM machines for the blindness person. We provide job opportunities for them. This is in line with our slogan. Each time we open a new branch, we will initiate a community program at once. It is also a community, a commitment we make to the society. When we start to run business, we started to make contributions to the local service as well. Through working with our partners and the regular bodies, we will organize volunteering projects. When you are working on these programs, it is very naturally that your connection will be more close and you will be able to transpass this spirit to a wider population. The volunteering work of employees is an indispensable part of Standard Chartered already. For the banking institution, we need to have more talents. It is a challenge for all the companies. How can you appeal the talent and return them? This is a big challenge to every one of us. 
to do volunteering work among the employees can do a great work. If you do the campus hire in the university, when you tell the graduates why you organize these volunteer programs, why you have the programs like SAB, it will help the newly graduates to understand the culture of a company. For the Talent who care, they will really choose you to work for you. In such a program, if they can take responsibility to manage these programs, it is improvement to themselves already. So from this point of view, if you are good at doing that volunteering work, you will be able to appeal, retain, and keep the talent. We will have a very prudent management policy in order to reduce the risk. Community investment can be really good, but as a manager, if you don't manage it well, it also has certain challenges. You need to have very strict framework to make sure all of the goals are achieved. So actually, I talked about the site visit to Huaxi Hospital is out of that purpose. The last, when you continuously contribute to the society, uh, community, so you can have some positive impact on the community. So we are answering with that. Actually, so our contribution is for the local community, and it's also an essential part. Of course, definitely there will be room for these, all these, all of these things. How can you? Do it a better job. How do you to become more efficient? That is also what I want to discuss with you today. Thank you. Thank you, John, um, and uh, for sharing those those experiences uh, for Standard Chartered Bank. I think your the collaboration with NGOs. Um, on a global scale as well as locally is, is extremely important. I was actually um, also impressed, not, you're not just engaging your employees, but also you're trying to get them to engage their clients yeah. in this program, which I think is, is uh, yeah, really, really progressive in, in CSR. And so, yeah, I hope, I hope you are here for good uh, in, in China uh, and, and globally. So uh, I'm going to open it up to the floor now uh, for questions. So, okay, got a few hands already. Um. Uh, I have a question because when I see this slide, I feel very excited because for the communicate community program can be connected with the CSR program. And you can get a buy-in from an executive team. So I want to ask for the quantification of this program. How do you measure the success of this program? And from what um, perspective do you measure this project? Thank you. Thank you for your question. This is really a good question because within the organization, just like you have said, ex when the executive said, I give you resources, and you try to be measured with what you have done. Actually, for every project, definitely there will be measurement criteria. Some of them are quantitative, some of them are not. For example, for the volunteering activities, so every year we have three days for the volunteer. Actually, when we do the annual plan, we will have a total number of employees volunteer hours. So we hope that we can provide that every year. So how do you quantify those work? Actually, for me, some of them are not quantitative things, which might be even more important. For example, for the recognition of culture, how do you measure that? It's a little bit difficult. But if you give an example, actually, for those recognition of culture, you can also have a very good reflection. For example, when you talk within some circle, and if they said that this company has a very characteristic volunteer activities, or maybe that 
this company has a very unique way to contribute to the community. This is not a quantitative indicator, but for those word of mouth repetition, the community recognition are still very important. Maybe when we are communicating with the senior executives, we need to focus on the quantitative variables, but we also need to focus on the non-quantitative parts, although it cannot be proved by numbers. I hope that I can answer your question. And Festo Quanchu Wang, last week uh, I visited Intel's Chengdu plant. I also know that they have doing very well in the volunteer ring. So you have been answering this question. So as a foreign funded enterprise doing your project in China, how are you organizing your activities for the volunteers? So normally, do you need to go through a long period for everyone to recognize that? Is it initiated by the employees or actually you have some administrative requirements for the employees? Do you work within third-party volunteer organizations? Thank you. Uh, first, I want to talk about organization. In terms of how we organize those activities, we need to have policy, procedures, and facilities from infrastructure. A very good example is that from top to down, you need to have uh, a target about three days of uh, volunteer activities. You can interpret it as a mandate. This is one important thing. Another thing is people. Because the employees are very busy, so sometimes it's very dif difficult for them to get some time out of that busy schedule. So you have to design a very good project so that they are willing to participate, and it should be sustainable for their participation. And you need to have passionate people who are willing to organize those activities and who will ha find fun part in that. If you don't have those leaders, if you are faced in a very wide area and a lot of departments, it will become chaotic. You need to have a very organized structure so that it can play its role. Of course, this organization needs to be approved by the leadership. So I think these two aspects, if you are achieve that, that can ensure the implementation. For your sex, second question, if I understand it well, so is it initiated by the management or by the employees? But normally it will be both ways. If the employees have the inter interest and also the company needs to support their ideas. You cannot say that you can only go to this place, not that place, for those three days. As long as it is contribution to the community, we should always support them. From another perspective, and within the organization, and when we are organizing those activities, or when we are evaluating those activities, another thing you need to consider about, since we are already putting so much time in that, can we have one or two projects which can better combine the skill set of the employees so that they can, the time can be used most efficiently. If you have such projects and if you can take appropriate method so to guide the employees so that they spend more time on those one or two projects, but that doesn't mean either or. It can also be both. Another question is, so how do we choose that? Of course, there will be multiple possibilities. You can make it in the McKinsey way. We have so many topics. So you, so you can prioritize all those items and you can identify your advantages and strengths. And 
you will feel that this agenda should be my priority. That will be the most scientific way that will also fit the, the organization's idea. And there's another way, like since believing, you just do it spontaneously. Every, if it's recognized by everyone, we can continue. Actually, ultimately, it doesn't mean that which way works better. So it depends on the impact you can make.